everyone, it's John from What Up, and welcome back to another video. Now, we've had a ton of Wheel of Time news lately, and I just covered a bunch of it in my last video. However, I wanted to break it up and do the teasers separately because we have two teasers we want to talk about today. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show them both, and then we're going to break them down. There's a few stills from them. I want to talk about certain things that happened in them because not only are they beautiful and well done, there's some controversial stuff from there too, and I want to get to all of that in this video. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what I do here, I essentially cover Wheel of Time news and I'm putting out a ton of content per week right now because there is so much to talk about. That will increase in frequency the closer we get to the release date, November 19th, and then it'll absolutely explode once the episodes drop and I can pick them apart and go basically frame by frame through them in all my explained, Easter egg, uh, in breakdown videos. So you're not going to want to miss any of that. So if you're not already a subscriber, click the subscribe button and the notification bell. You don't want to miss a single thing I put out over the next coming months. All right. All of that being said, spoiler warning, in this video we're going to break down two teasers from the first season of Amazon Prime's Wheel of Time series. So if you haven't read at least the first book of the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan, that's the Eye of the World, be forewarned, I'm going to ruin certain elements and plot points from that particular book. All right, all of that being said, let's get on to the video. All right, so let's take a look at the very first teaser. Now, this one features Matt quite heavily and has been kind of labeled as the Matt teaser by... Uh, the Wheel of Time fandom. However, I sort of like the Blood Snow teaser a bit better because, let's face it, the real controversial stuff comes when we see that Aiel on the screen for, I, I mean, it's not the first time we've seen it in the trailer, but this is our first real good look at them. All right, let's take a look at that trailer. The Dark One is waking, but there will be one who can stand against him, and it's one of you. One of us, the Dragon Reborn. The most powerful Chandler that ever lived. Every prophecy is the same. The dragon will either defeat the Dark One or join him. I'll kill them myself before I let him hunt them. The Wheel of Time, only on Prime Video. All right, let's go through some stills of the, the teaser here. Uh, this first one is basically Marcus Rutherford as parent. I want to showcase this because he's unkempt. He's dirty. He's disheveled. He does not look clean and pristine like a lot of people have complained about in a lot of the promotional material and teasers. They look too nice to be on the road. Well, let's face it, he hasn't looked like he's had a bath in a while. He looks sleep-deprived, haggard. He looks like he's been on the road for a bit, I think. What we're seeing in the promotional materials is not always exactly what we're going to see on the screen because let's face it right here, he looks like he's been on the road. Um, yeah, and I bet his clothes reflect that. There is some mud on them. <laughs> now we're going to talk about this one here. If anything puts the Camelin case to rest, it's this photo. So I've been saying for a long time that we're not going to see Camelin in the first season, that all the events of Camelin will be transposed to Tarvalon instead. Now, it's been a huge fan theory. However, we've had support from a ton of different leaks, like an absolute mountain of leaks surrounding Tarvalon. This particular image showcasing Rand and Matt in Tarvalon, especially the fact that Matt's kind of looking around like he's absolutely amazed in this city, is probably the best argument yet. I mean, how do we know it's Tarvalon? Take a look at the background. All of the leaked photos we had of Tarvalon, and it is a giant set they built in the back lot of Jordan Studios. Um, this matches those. So this is Tarvalon for sure, 100%, and they're acting like it's their first time in the city. So I'm guessing this is probably the nail in the coffin for the Camelon theory. We're not going to see Camelon at all. All the events of Camelon are going to happen in Tarvalon instead, which is a very smart choice for a number of different reasons, because Tarvalon is going to be featured heavily in the second season, and from then on, Camelon... You see it for a bit in the first book, and then it goes away for a very long time, and you don't really see it again until much later on in the book series. So I think as far as money goes, it makes sense. As far as world building, it makes sense. I think for a bunch of different reasons, it makes sense to move things there. But again, final nail in the coffin of the Camelon theory, we are definitely not seeing Camelon in the first season as far as I'm concerned. All right, this shot here, we've seen this a number of different times. It's basically Moraine exiting what I believe to be the White Tower at night. It's just a beautiful shot. I wanted to showcase it. And that leads us into this. This is Barney Harris's Matt, and this is around the time in that teaser where he has his lines. He talks about the Dragon Reborn, and he really, in my opinion, embodies Matt. I'm sad to see him go. I'm sad he's not returning for the second season, um, but I am excited for the new actor, how he's going to portray Matt, because a lot of people had their reservations about Barney uh, until he started interacting with the fandom, and then everyone instantly fell in love with him. So as the cast tends to interact with the fandom, I think people you know, start to form opinions, and they're usually positive ones in every case of the cast so far. So again, I want to see, show this here because I have a lot of love for Barney Harris's Matt. I'm really excited to see him on the screen. Um, I'm sad to see him go, but I am excited to see the next actor play Matt as well. 
All right, now we're gonna get into this. Now I wanna talk about this because we know the actors are aged up a bit for the series rather than in, they are in the book. They're a couple years older. And I think that is for, you know, for a small part, this reason here. In the books, Rand and Egwene had a relationship. And, and I'm gonna use air quotes, a relationship, because they weren't really in a relationship as far as I was, concern, I was concerned. And most readers would probably say the same thing. No one really believed it. It was kind of just a thing that they talked about. They were promised and it was, it, it, it kind of went to the wayside. And so when things got in the way of that relationship, no one seemed to care. Like it was not a big point to the books. However, in a lot of the promotional material we're seeing, we're seeing them holding hands. We're seeing them in various states of undress. We're seeing them uh, mid-kiss. We're seeing them uh, basically being lovey-dovey towards each other. I think they're really going to punch up the romance between the two of them um, and make us believe it. So when things happen later on and things come between it and there's conflict there, it'll be more impactful to the viewer. So that's why I want to show this here. Just We're seeing more and more of these things come out. I think in the first season, we're going to see a full-on um, Rand and Egwene relationship. And I think it, it'll actually be a really good thing for the show. All right, folks, now we're into the fun part. This is the part of the video where we're going to talk just a little bit about controversy. Now, I want to preface this by saying that um, I still won't break my spoiler warning. I won't go beyond the first book. Uh, we're going to talk about things that are only within the first book, except for names. I'm going to throw out a couple of names here and there. So for book readers who have read further on in the book series, you're going to understand the names and understand what I mean by them, but it won't spoil any plot points or, or character arcs for you if you haven't read beyond the first book. So there's that. Now, in saying that, every single thing that Sony and Amazon have put out about the Wheel of Time, someone has said something to say about it, both good and bad. So, uh... Let's start with the Waygate. A lot of people dislike the way the Waygate looks. There are a few people that like it. A lot of people dislike the new Aes Sedai rings and the way they showcase the color. Some people like it. A lot of people dislike the Aes Sedai uniforms and how they're the color of their Ajas. Some people like it. There's a little bit about everything. Now, all that being said, this is really no different. And this has been the buzz, the talk of Twitter, Reddit, uh, and Facebook over the last couple of days since this teaser came out. And why is that? Well... This is our first real good look at the Aiel. So we have this shot and we have this shot here. Now, from what we see in these photos, I believe this to be the Battle of the Shining Walls, the Blood Snow, which happens um, during the Aiel War right outside Tarvalon. Now, we know that Tam Althor was there uh, as part of the Illinor Companions, and he fought in the Blood Snow. That's not a big shock, and that is not a spoiler for anything beyond the first book, because he said as much during his fever dreams, and they kind of pieced it together later on. Now... Nine bees in the front of this guy's uniform. Yeah, this is one of the Illinor companions. Uh, and this Aiel is who we think to be the same Aiel we saw in the, in the trailer from behind. Now, from the way that this Aiel looks, a lot of people are saying this is most likely a maiden of the spear. And she's fighting one of the Illinors here. So with the helmet and without. She's stabbing him in the chest. Um, so she's fighting. Now... There's been a lot of talk of who this maiden could be. Uh, I actually talked about it the, on the Dusty Wheel the other night with uh, Matt, the innkeeper, uh, and, uh, and Taka Randryoid. However, um, no one really knows. So the theories I like best is Amis, who was a maiden of the sphere before she became a wise one. And you don't know who she is in the first book just yet, but that's not really spoiling much for you. Uh, or Tigraine. Um, again, you hear about her in the first book, uh, and you know that she, she's gone, but... Those are the two my two guesses for this. Now, the only reason I'm guessing, guessing to Grain is because it helps to show Rand's parentage. So we know that Rand was born on the slopes of Dragon Mount. We know that Tam found him there, um, and he was born to a, a Maiden of the Spear. So, again, this could be to Grain, his mother, one of the Maidens of the Spear. Uh, slight spoiler warning there, I guess. Uh, beyond the first book, but not a whole lot. It won't spoil too much for you. Um... But why are these images controversial? They're beautiful. I mean, we get a good look at the Cadence Sword. We get a look, good look at the Illinor armor. I mean, look at the cloak, that yellow cloak. I think it's glorious. I love it. Especially against the white landscape. Really beautiful. But again, why is it controversial? Well, this Aiel does not have her face covered. Now, we know that, reading the book series, that Aiel can only kill with their face covered. If they don't have their face covered, they don't plan on killing. So, people are losing their minds over this because... She's stabbing this dude in the chest. She slashes this guy in the belly. Now, again, we don't know if this is the exact same Aiel or not. I think it is, but we're, we're not 100%. It could be separate shots framed that way. We don't see this Aiel's face, so we can kind of ignore this picture. But this one here, we see her face, and she is stabbing him straight up in the chest. In between different links in the front of his armor. And she doesn't have her face covered. So that's, that's, that's the controversy here. Now, 
going to go through a couple of different things. One, it's possible that some of the actors and actresses who are going to play Aiel uh, would have problems with having their face covered whenever they're on screen. Um, so maybe their contract stated they wouldn't have that done and production got together as a team and decided, eh, maybe we won't do that. That's the first possibility. Although it is a very big change to the source material, a very big change to the story um, for readers, but it would mean nothing to non-readers. So that's that's entirely a possibility. The second possibility here is that this Maiden of the Spear does not intend to kill in any way, shape, or form. Maybe she's in the process of giving birth to Rand if it is to Grain. Maybe she is trying to get out to help someone else. Maybe she is just trying to do something on the battlefield without actively killing. She pulled her veil down to do whatever she had to do. And these people just got in, or this gentleman just got in her way. And it, she's not really killing him. Again, hard to tell. It's a very short snippet. It's only a few seconds long. You don't know if she's really killing him or not. Uh, or wounding him to the point where he will be killed. But I will say that in the book series, the Aiel do a ton of violence when they're not veiled. As long as they're not killing. If, they, if they're intent on killing, their veil's up 100%. Maybe she doesn't intend to kill here. I don't know. So those are my two theories on why possibly she doesn't have her veil up. I want to hear you folks down below in the comments. Let me know what you think. I mean, let's face it, this was pretty controversial. Everybody in the fandom's talking about it. I want to hear your take on it in the comments down below. Why is she not veiled? Who is this Aiel? Do you like Amis? I really like the idea that this is Amis. I really like that theory. I think it's fantastic. Or is it to grain? Or is it just some generic Maiden of the Spear number three? Some featured extra? I, I have no idea. Let me know in the comments down below what you folks think. All right, now we have to get on to that Nynaeve teaser. All right, so we did have a second teaser over the last couple of days, and this one has been dubbed the Nynaeve teaser because it heavily features Nynaeve. And she's a badass i don't know what else to say she's really cool and i love seeing this so we're going to show you the teaser now and then after the teaser i'll throw up a few stills and we're going to break it down but i really like seeing this the dark one is waking if we do not stop him the whole world will turn to darkness there will be one who can stand against him and it's one of you. The Wheel of Time. Only on Prime Video. Really very cool. Uh, and I say that a lot about a lot of things, but this teaser was probably one of my favorites so far because it featured Zoe Robbins being an absolute badass as Nynaeve, and I can't wait to see that on the screen. But again, Zoe, if you ever happen to watch this, love an interview because I think you're absolutely amazing. So, this showcases Zoe in a cave. So, Nynaeve is in a cave here. Now, I believe this completely justifies one of the leaks that we just had. Um, and we're going to talk about that leak in a video I'm probably going to release tomorrow about leaks. Um, but this basically gives a lot of credence to that leak because that leak came out prior to this teaser and it talks about things that happened in this teaser. So, buckle up when we talk about that one. I think a lot of it's going to be factually correct. Now, she's in this cave. Now, this cave looks to be... A lot like the cave that Egwene did her uh, women's circle initiation in, where she comes up out of the pool of water and she has all the dye all over her. I think this is the same spot, I believe. Not 100%, but let me know in the comments down below if you think it is. Then we have this shot here of the Trolloc entering the cave, the pool in the middle. Again, a lot of these rock formations look very similar to the other teasers we've seen. And cuts to this, Tarvalon at night. Now, active drag him out in the background. Glorious sweeping shot of Tarvalon here at night. And again, Everything they've shown us of these outdoor shots of the cities, of the landscapes and whatnot, they're beautiful. Like they are artwork, like calendar worthy, uh, desktop, you know, worthy. Like I'm, I've, I love them. I'd print them off, put them on the wall. Beautiful. Now, back to the naive part. Uh, it's not gushing over landscapes and it's a little weird, I guess. Um, but we see the Trolloc here and he has a giant spear. Now, this Trolloc is wearing no armor whatsoever. Now, I believe in a video I did well over a year ago when I talked to um, a stuntman as well as an extra and I did interviews with them and, and posted them. Uh, you'll have to search back through my videos to find them. They did talk about the Trollocs, a lot of them not wearing armor at all, which sort of kind of makes sense when you think about it. If you have thousands and thousands of Trollocs in an army, how are you going to arm and armor them all um, the same without having massive forges and, and a lot of infrastructure in the Blight. They don't really have that there, so I think a lot of what they're going to be wearing in the show will be scavenged off people, which gives it a little sense of realism there. Cut to this shot here of Rand. Now, Rand is walking down the hallway looking just mad, like very intense. He has a sword and his bow on his back. Now, you notice in the background there, there are the 
two eagles on either side. Now those are the Shinaran eagles, so I believe this to be Faldera. Almost 100% this is a shot from Faldera, because let's face it, he's probably going out to practice his bow before he talks to Egwene, and all the leaked photos and some of the promotional material we've seen so far, we've seen shots of that scene. I think this is the precursor to that scene. He's probably got some bad news, and he's going to go out and blow off some steam. That's my guess. And we have this, back to Zoe Robbins' Nynaeve in the pool. The Trolloc appears to be in the pool with her, and this is a knife that he has on his side. She very stealthily reaches up, grabs the knife, takes him out. Really cool, really badass, really, really neat to see. Uh, I want to know your comments on this down below in the description box, because let's face it, so far this is my 100% favorite teaser we've seen uh, out of all of them. Really very cool. Now, something I will mention is I think we're going to get more of these over the coming weeks. We've seen one that heavily featured Matt, one that heavily featured Nynaeve. I think, I think we'll see more, maybe for each of the characters over the next week or so before the premiere on the 15th. Now, what I will mention about that premiere, if, uh, if you don't want spoilers, you're probably not watching this channel because let's face it, my bread and butter is spoilers. I talk about stuff all the time, leaks and, and all of that. However, if you don't want any spoilers, you don't want the first few episodes spoiled, maybe... Just maybe stay off social media because after the 15th, there are going to be a ton of people on Reddit, on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, all talking about the first few episodes because it'll be out there. A lot of people will have seen it at that point prior to the release to the rest of the world uh, at, on November 19th. Now, I know November 19th, I've already blocked it off, and my plan is to watch all three episodes and make a ton of videos for you folks. That's, that's my plan, uh, and I can't wait to do that. Now... Uh, before I go, I do want to plug one more thing. That's my Patreon. The link to it is down below in the description box. Uh, I recently just set up another batch of patron stuff. So if you like What Up Swag, I don't sell it. However, I do give it away to my patrons. So if you like stickers or magnets or keychains or t-shirts or things like that, I do send that stuff out to my patrons. Uh, so uh, if you want to support the channel in some small way, any little bit helps, get down there, click on the Patreon, and uh, maybe get some What Up Swag in the process. All right. I want to thank you all so very much for sticking with me here to the very end. And here's to many more.